Hello, my friends. How are you doing? Today, I want to react to the video by Steven Zapata called The End of Art. I like that video. Very dramatic. And he's talking about AI and how it's taking away the chops from artists and kind of replacing art and artists in general. Um, so let's react to that. It's a very interesting video. You should watch that. I'm giving you my opinion on that. Okay, so he is making multiple points. I could see basically three major points he's making. Now, the first one is about legal standpoints. I will not talk about that because I'm not a lawyer, so I'm not going to touch that. But the other two about art itself. And this is where I come from. And I want to talk about that. So that's interesting. And the first point that he is making is that AI is so good going to be so good and understanding us so well that we don't even need artists anymore and also this is the sinister plan of these ai companies they want to replace the artists so they can sell the product either the art directly to you or to companies who sell art to you like the big studios and you would think wow that makes so much sense yes absolutely this is how that would work and i don't think this is going to work like that I will tell you in a second why. Now, the second point he's making is that there is going to be so much art and everybody's doing it that it becomes purposeless and we can't even find the good art anymore. Again, I don't think this is how that's going to work out. Uh, so let's start here with the first point where he says, well, AI is going to be so amazing. And uh, what he says is right now we are training the AI by putting in the prompts and the artists we like and the styles we like and the keywords we like. And at a certain point, the AI has figured us out as mankind and it can create individual artworks that we will so much enjoy. We don't even want to look at actual art from actual artists anymore um i don't think that is how this is going to work out and uh, i want to give you a good example for that um that is hollywood now we know that hollywood has a lot of money to create their movies so they can afford all of the statistics and peer reviews and test screenings and marketing research they want and they also can afford all the amazing tools and software and hardware and camera and light equipment sound equipment all these kind of things to create these movies and they can afford the best actors and writers and directors and makeup artists and costume artists and light artists whatever you need they can afford the best people on the planet now what exactly are they doing with all of that Keep in mind, we have all of the information we want and the best human minds working together to create something amazing. And on top of that, we have cinematic universes where we only have a handful of heroes with the same kind of story. So you would think when you do the 20th movie of that series, it has to be better than the first movie, right? We will go out of the movie and say, yes, I always waited for a movie like that. And they told a story I've never heard before. And it's so amazing. It's really beautiful. Uh, no. I don't think that is how it worked out for us. I think a lot of people would agree that a lot of these movies are even not really worth watching, or at least they are very shallow. Um, they are artistically beautiful from the visual design and from the music and the audio effects. I love that. The story is not great. Um, and it's not, it's not an enjoyable movie overall it's not something where i say this is one of the best movies i've ever seen in my life and they have all that kind of information and the human feeling the human experience the human master workers master craftsmen to create that ai has none of that right ai has information but it also i know ai sounds like it is intelligent because it's in the name but it's not intelligent it is a process that doesn't even understand what is going on. Just because you write duck and a picture of a duck is coming out does not mean that the AI understands what a duck is. I give you an example of that too. If I give you a green card and say every time I give you a green card, you give me a blue card. Do you understand why you give me a blue card or what that blue card even means at all? You don't. The only thing you do is you get something you know what I want to have in return that does not constitute understanding of anything or intelligence in any way. 
So yeah, even the best people on the planet right now cannot figure out how to, with 100% certainty, make a masterpiece artwork just like that with all of the experience they have and all of the information they have. Now let's go to the second point. There's going to be so much of that art because everybody can do it now that it will completely overflow the internet and um, nobody is going to want that anymore. Nobody's going to find that anymore. Well, we do have, luckily, a system in place that helps us figure out what good content we want to see, and that is social media, right? So the social media algorithms are kind of trained on what you want to see and they kind of suggest to you things you might want to see like this video you clicked on that because you know my channel but a lot of people don't know my channel even if i would be mr beast and had 107 million subscribers that is only less than 1.5 percent of the global population so 98.5 percent of the human populace is not even subscribed to Mr. Beast, let alone watching his movies, his videos, because subscribing does not mean you watch these movies. So, yeah, he doesn't have in a global perspective that much reach, actually. Right. Um, but still, the algorithms are there to filter that content. So at the same time, they try to suggest to you what you like. They filter out what you don't like, but they also give everybody a chance, a possibility to reach an audience. And with dedication and quality and consistency, you can build up an audience over time that might like your content for a certain time before they find something else they enjoy more. This is just how that happens. Every big YouTube star goes up and goes down at a certain time. So success is not guaranteed. So we have this system already in place, so we don't need to really worry about that. Now, the interesting thing is also in his uh, video, he is doing a sketch at the same time, a physical sketch, not a digital sketch, a paper, I think pencil on paper. So this already is a bit ironic because it shows you directly there are other art forms than digital art forms, right? And as far as I know, we don't have AIs right now that do physical performances that make they sing on stage, they play the guitar for you on stage, they do a theater play, they do a drawing, they paint oil on canvas, all these kind of things. They don't do that. They do digital things. And yes, maybe there you can create things. And yes, maybe there people will be replaced by that technology. That might be absolutely true. And I can absolutely agree to the argument that I say when you have too much of something, people might get a little bit dreary of it and don't want to have that anymore. And that is absolutely true, because if you think, for example, about Baroque and about Renaissance and about all these beautiful decorations, I, I'm living in Vienna. I'm seeing these ornaments on the houses everywhere because we have these old houses still. We don't have the decorations most of the time in the rooms anymore. but. Today, if you think about it, we have all of the technology to make these ornaments and the wallpapers and all this very heavy decoration affordable, mass produced to reach everybody for a good price. Do we really want that anymore? We don't, right? We have abstract houses that have very minimalistic facades. The insides are white walls and there is not much decoration on the walls other than you hanging pictures up. And I know maximalism is coming back in a certain way, but most of the people want a white wall and a square room and the outside rather minimalist because this is the taste we have right now. We're wearing t-shirts. I'm not wearing a Victorian outfit that is stitched. It would be cool on a stage. I agree for that, uh, but not in everyday life, right? Uh, so tastes change. And the interesting thing is about that also, when we think about back about photography, which is also a system where you press a button and it poops out an image for you, this majorly changed how we think about art, about what art is, about what kind of art we buy and enjoy. So people still buy oil paintings, right? And buy sculptures, but it's not that common anymore because now if you want to have a portrait, you simply make a selfie with your phone. And if you go on a journey, you simply make a photo of that landscape or that temple or that beach or whatever. You don't have someone 
coming there making an oil painting of that and that's completely okay times change jobs change technology changes but new things come around so compared to the day back then when photography was invented we have massively massively more artists today than we had ever before and art has changed in a major way back then you will find that most of the paintings have been of Greek and Roman gods and heroes and then of the king and the pope and then a bit landscapes too uh, but it wasn't very questioning and philosophical as we have in art today that very questioning very self-referential it has the ability to make art for the purpose of art to ask question what is an image what is an artwork what are we as people as mankind as culture all these kind of things art can ask that and can create the most beautiful but also the most absurd art pieces it wants to and it's still okay because this is what art has become a medium where everything is allowed and every question is worthy to be asked right that is very very important so this tool I feel like and this is my strong belief AI is going to help us to understand who we are because it is self-referential it is a mirror to us it has learned the styles we have created in the past and you can throw some words at it and it's like a canvas that reacts to you and say is this really what you want look at that picture maybe you want something different maybe you know what as an ai you can actually train me with your own pictures try to overcome me try to go beyond me try to create something that is not ai art anymore but is so filled with purpose and meaning and with your own inner longing and drive as an artist that the ai is just a mere small tool for that that you use to do things and more than that what ai can do is it can overcome all the limitations we have right now in this case you can actually think about synthesizers because in the past you could either play the piano or the violin or the trumpet or you could sing in a core but not many people could do all of these things and then we had synthesizers and samplers and effects and all these kind of things that not only replace technology that was extremely expensive and unaffordable for most people but that enable you to play all these instruments and have a complete orchestra with a chorus if you want to or do something completely different so this means AI is opening up a lot of different artistic skills that you don't need to have but you can express your idea through these mediums to reach the other side and create something that's completely different and then again I want to remind you I want to ask you how much music has changed when synthesizers came around before we had songs we had beautiful music but it was music in a song format in this classical style and then we had synthesizers and then they broke open everything and suddenly you have this kind of live remixing and scratching and sampling and you have new music styles like techno that are very repetitive that often don't even have a melody that don't have lyrics uh, most of the time that created new styles of how we party how we dance how we interact how we perceive music in our daily life and the concept the philosophy of music has changed too so that on a philosophical level also is very interesting to think about and ai can do all of that for us and be the big question that is looming over us who are you who do you want to be how far can you reach if i take away all the limits you had what kind of idea can you come up with and how amazing can you make that idea and i think that is a huge potential that we are now presented with as mankind and everybody can be part of that that's the more important thing of that even everybody can be part of that and this has always helped us if you think about the history of art and culture every time a technology came around that enabled more people to be take part in that and removes the gatekeeping that really spurred that heat that that explode that the creativity the reach the ingenuity 
and the variety, the multiplicity of that art, because suddenly even people who can't do these things can express themselves. People who can't afford to go to these art schools and spend all their time on that and their life on that, they can create something, suddenly reach out to millions of people. This is also what social media has done for art and for creativity. People can reach out, removing the gates, opening it up to everybody so they can do stuff. And I find that absolutely amazing. And I think this is not the end of art. This is the birth of art, a new art, a freer art, a more open art that everybody can access and that reaches further than we ever thought art could. Well, let me know in the comments what you think. Thanks for watching. Leave a like and see you soon. Bye. Oh, you're still here. So uh, this is the end screen. There's other stuff you can watch like this or that's really cool. And yeah, I hope I see you soon. Uh, leave a like if you haven't yet. And well, um, yeah.